Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to uh, Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. I'm also on uh, Brighteon.com under Heavenly Glory. And my website is Eternal Values Ministries. Dot com. Well, praise the Lord. Today I want to give you a word uh, from the Lord about the uh, purpose of the Internet. What's, what's really behind in this um, global push to get all the information, everything, worldwide on uh, just certain uh, search, search engines. Google, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever the search engines are, um, they're narrowing it down. Soon, the Bible will be hate speech. Because it's already, it's already deemed hate speech. They've already uh, started to censor some scriptures and, and stuff like that. So, um, why don't we uh, look at some things here and start with a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, we just come to your throne of grace and we're so thankful and we thank you Lord that you are God and there's none like you Lord and Lord you're going to put everything right help us to endure the uh, sufferings help us to have patience to endure the persecutions and the things that are about to come on the face of the whole earth Father I pray that uh, saints might be able to receive understanding in wisdom through this word, through my videos, Lord, through my teachings, my preaching, whether it be on the street or whether it be right here in the office. So I pray, Father, that uh, the saints might be built up into faith, that we might not be asleep, but we might be uh, woken up because uh, the darkness is coming, it's coming fast. And so we thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And um, I'll read this first. And then I'll go through some scriptures with you. Hey, the internet was invented to subdue the whole earth in an electronic grid. Only those who worship the beast and his image can buy and sell. In other words, work, do business, commerce. The rest are outcasts and will be hunted down throughout the planet. I, the Lord, have thwarted their plans of world conquest by installing President Trump. Make not an idol out of him, but take advantage of this grace period to preach the gospel. Soon the great Search engines will ban the scriptures from being used on their platforms. It will be deemed hate speech. It has already begun. What man means for evil, what men mean for evil, I, the Lord, use for good to bring many souls to salvation. The hour is coming. The hour is coming when the darkness of evil will be so great that a kind word or the preaching of salvation will provoke men to kill you. Redeem the time, for the day is evil, the night's coming when no man can work. The work will continue on in the evil darkness, but with many martyrs. Many people will die as witnesses for Christ. And the Lord tells me, you are one of them, speaking of me. Therefore rejoice, says the Lord God, and get busy preaching. No time to waste. The God of all grace, amen. Now let's look at um, some things here. Why don't we go to um, Isaiah 25 and we can start in, um, let's see, start in verse 5. 
Isaiah 25, 5. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of vines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines, and of the lees well refined. And he will destroy in his mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. And he, and, uh, he will swallow up death and victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from our faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord had spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. Hello, R.D., Yahweh, Jehovah. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Praise the Lord. And so, let me explain to you what he's talking about. There's a veil. He's speaking about all the earth. Now, I went and I looked up these words in the uh, Greek. I'm using the blue blue letter Bible. And if you look at, you can go to Strong's Concordance. This is a great tool for studying. And it gives you all the, um, and we go to words here. And I looked up this word veil, because I thought it sounds to me like a, uh, like a net. A net that is uh, cast over um, all the earth. And let's see, where is that word? All right, and the veil, verse uh, Isaiah 25, verse 7. And he will destroy this mountain, he will, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. There's something cast over all the people of the world, all the nations of the world, and the veil that is spread over all nations. So let's look up that word veil. Okay, the computer's moving along. <laughs> all righty. And let's see what we got here. Come on, computer. Okay. Um, the word here that's being used is, um, now listen to this, a pouring, libation, molten metal, cast image, drink offering, Libation with covenant sacrifice is talking about uh, offerings, animal sacrifice. Molten metal, molten image, molten gods. In other words, molten, um, you melt down the metal and you, uh, you form your gods out of them. Web covering, web, hmm. uh, the web, huh? www, the web covering veil woven stuff. So it could be kind of look like, like a net, couldn't it? Okay, and so um, I want you to understand that this this word has the idea of uh, false idolatrous gods and something that covers the, uh, the whole earth. Amen? And so this here then is um, is idolatry at its uh, height. Now I want to. I want you. I want you to see. It says the internet was invented to subdue the whole earth in an electronic grid, and that's what's happening. That's what's happening right now, saints. An electronic grid. Only those who worship the beast and his image can buy or sell. That's in Revelation 13. I'll let you uh, 
Look that up for yourselves. Revelation 13. Maybe we'll go there later on. And the rest of the world are going to be outcasts and hunted down. The real believers in the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, they, they will not, they will not um, bow down to this image that's going to be made in the future by the Antichrist. Because that's what this is all going towards. I want to go to uh, Daniel chapter uh, 3. And in Daniel uh, chapter 3, we have uh, Nebuchadnezzar here, the king of uh, Babylon, one of the most powerful, greatest uh, nations that existed on the, uh, on the face of the earth. And he says in uh, 3.1, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, or Chadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, three score is three times 20, 60 cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits, he set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. The princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image. Now the whole thing was, this was um, Nebuchadnezzar was a very powerful king there in the Middle East, in, uh, in Babylon, in the East, and many, many nations and peoples, it says here, uh, to you it is commanded all oh, the people, nations, and languages that that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, rock and roll, rap, blues, just name it, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So this king makes an image of himself 66 feet high well, it's cubits, and six cubits wide. That is 666. Six, six. Revelation 13 says that's the number of the beast. Now, let's continue here. Uh, and what they're supposed to do when they hear the music, they're supposed to, in verse 6 it says, and whosoever fall it down, not fall it down, and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst, into the middle of a burning, fiery furnace. Isn't that something? The devil always has everything backwards, doesn't he? Uh, if you go and worship this image, fall down and worship it, you'll end up in hell for eternity. If you don't, you could get burned up for a little while, but you have eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the devil's still doing today. He's turning it all on its head. He's turning it upside down. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of all the instruments and all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image, Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. There were three boys, three young men, who were taken uh, as slaves from Jerusalem. They were to be taught all the ways of the Chaldean, the astrologies. They were, they were smart boys, so they were teaching them to, uh, to set them up high in the kingdom. Daniel was one of them. These three were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what we have here is these three boys did not bend down to the image because it's against their training as Hebrew boys under the laws of Moses to worship idols. First and second commandments. You shall not make any graven images. I'm a jealous God, he says, and so forth. And so, um, these three boys, they just uh, plainly told uh, Nebuchadnezzar in verse uh, 16, Daniel 3.16, he says, Answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful, full of care, in other words, to answer thee in this matter. In other words, I don't got to pray about this, man. I... I know what the Lord and what the Word of God says. If it be so, our God, 
whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They're saying, listen, God is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he did. But he says, if not, we're still not bowing down. Let it burn us up. There's been millions and millions of martyrs burnt for not bowing down to the Pope, not bowing down to uh, Mohammed, not bowing down to communist rule and dictators throughout the world. That's serious business. And, uh, and so they, they threw him inside the furnace. And, and look what Nebuchadnezzar, he, he asked a question. He went, he looked through a window in the furnace in verse 25, and the king says, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men, only three were injured. I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They're just walking around the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Ha! Huh. This is a picture of the saints in the great tribulation, the 42 months of tribulation that is very soon to come upon us, the rule of the Antichrist. Also, you'll find it in Revelation 13, in um, different parts of the uh, Bible. It is also in uh, Daniel chapter 9, speaks about it in many other uh, places, but it's, uh, this is, uh, Revelation 13 is a real good place because it makes it very, very clear. All right, and so this here is the picture of this king who has exalted himself above everybody and everything. He's like uh, depicted as a tree with great branches, and all the nations are under his shade, and all the animals, and they all eat from him, and they live there, and, and so forth. But God's going to deal with this king. He lost his mind for seven years, and he walked around on all fours like an animal. His hair grew like feathers, his uh, nails on his hands and feet like claws, and seven years went by until he, until he said, hey, God is a God who appoints whoever he wants, whether it be president or dictator or whatever ruler he wants, and he takes down whoever he wants. He is God. He does what he wants. And the Lord gave Nebuchadnezzar back his mind and gave him back his kingship to rule over Israel not Israel, but over Babylon, and he was a converted man. He wasn't interested no more in worshiping pagan gods and making his own idols and exalting himself. And by the way, that's the key to the Antichrist. He exalts himself above all gods, above all of all the pagan gods. He's the chief one. That's Second Thessalonians chapter Two, and so um, he's going to subdue the whole planet. He's going to come out with the mark of the beast. You won't be able to buy or sell unless you have this mark. We got the technology here today. People are getting marks right now. I just read uh, some articles on the internet that uh, what's his name, El Elon Musk? He's coming up with a company to make chips to embed it inside people's heads. Electronic chips to put inside of you to link you up to the cloud, the great cloud, the uh, AI, artificial intelligence. My, oh, my, oh, my, man. What are we coming down to, huh? I mean, this is happening right now. Google it out, man. Elon Musk and the, uh, and the chip. This is amazing. Because it tells you in Revelation 13, it's going to be in your right hand or your forehead and you won't be able to buy or sell. They want to link us up to computer. You ever watch the, uh, uh, what was it, on uh, Star Trek? The Borg, the Borg, the Collective. They're all mixed up with computers and, and robot and artificial arms, legs, eyes, and everything. And they're hooked up to the great Collective, to the great computer. Man, I'm telling you, man, this, this science fiction stuff is starting to become reality. And this is written, by the way, what Daniel wrote 
was way beyond, way before Christ, and was written in Revelation 13, is in the first century, after Christ, right after Christ was uh, crucified, around 90 A.D., around that time. So this is 2,000 years later, and, and uh, you know, the Bible's right. The Bible is true. Let's continue here. Um, and so, um, the Lord goes on here and says, I, the Lord, have thwarted their plans of world con conquest by installing President Trump. <laughs> Don't make an idol of him. Now, whatever you think of Trump, whether you got Trump derangement syndrome or whether you think Trump is God, <laughs> I personally believe he's a man that God put in power for a time like this. Because I tell you what, man, there's a program. It's called the Mystery of Iniquity, Lawlessness by the Devil. And when they did not get to continue their lawlessness, their uh, corruption, their program by installing uh, Hillary Clinton to continue onward, and uh, this guy Trump wins, this billionaire businessman wins, boy oh boy, they're trying to take him down so hard. It's not that he's an angel or that uh, he's so godly, <laughs> but rather that, you know, God puts in power who he wants to put in power. When he put it, uh, Cyrus in power, or Artaxerxes, who let the uh, Jews go back from Babylon after Persia conquered ba Babylon. These were pagan worshiping kings. They didn't worship the God of Israel. To them, Israel and their gods were in the pantheon of a lot of gods. Just like today, Jesus is just one of many gods. No, he is the God, the creator, the redeemer, the savior. Amen. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, they, they don't get it. They don't get it. Well, anyway, Trump is in, and this is a period of grace. Now, we are in the dispensation of grace since about Pentecost. All right, since Paul started preaching, you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But now, the program of the mystery of iniquity is being, is being thwarted, it's being held back by Trump. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with Trump. I don't know if he's, even, if he's uh, one of the Antichrists. There's two of them, the beast and the false prophet, right? And so we'll have to wait and see. But God sets up who he wants, and he uses them as he wants, regardless if they're Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, Libertarian, whatever. Makes no, that's not the issue here. God's in charge. And so, um, I'll tell you what, when Trump is removed, the Lord has showed me this, and we, we, we will get in there, God forbid, man, um, but it, it's probably going to happen. We're going to get in some kind of socialist, progressive, that has uh, cows blowing farts, and you got to, and climate change, and, uh, you know, all, all this insanity stuff, all this insanity, uh, they're going to just, they're already destroying the place. Uh, a civil war is about to start. This is what they're after. There's, a civil war is about to start because there are good men that will stand up and they will not allow this to have uh, your little girl, your daughter, or your wife at some swimming pool and some man comes in with, with high heels and nylons, you know, and he thinks he's a woman. And he's changing and he's naked there. I mean... Uh, God help us, man. These people have lost their minds. They've lost their mind. And this is that mystery of iniquity, iniquity, mystery of lawlessness, completely lawless. Nakedness is a shame. The first thing that happened to Adam and Eve when they rebelled, when they sinned and disobeyed God, is they knew they were naked and God covered them. It's a shame to be naked. And, and here they want the opposite sex of some deranged person that doesn't know if they're a man or a woman uh, in there with your little daughter or, or with your wife. Man, I'm telling you, uh, real men ain't going to stand for that kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's, I'm not advocating violence and wars and fightings, but I'm telling you, 
things are going to happen. Now, and so um, Trump is in right now. And um, soon the search engines, the great search engines of the world, Google and so forth, will start uh, banning the Bible, will start banning scriptures as, uh, as hate speech, hate speech. Excuse this fly here, drives me nuts, <laughs> as hate speech. Um, why? Well, uh, Jesus said in the beginning he made a male and female. You know, he says, Genesis 1 says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> and it proves that, uh, you know, that this is more scientific than... Uh, that a creator creating things than you and me coming from a monkey in which there's no proof whatsoever. It's, it's, uh, it's insanity. Complete insanity. It's been just insanity. It's been going on for, since the beginning. Okay? And, uh, and so, you know, uh, or that they dishonor their bodies between themselves. The women leave the natural use of the man and the men, they burn in their lust one towards another. Romans chapter 1. Men with men doing that which is unseemly and receiving the recompense, the payback of their reward. And God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That means a hopelessly a vile, bad, cannot, cannot tell the difference between good and evil. No morals. Anything goes. And that's where we're at. And um, so, that's Romans 1. That's hate speech. That's hate speech. Or that uh, uh, Mohammed and Islam, when you go and you look where it really came from, and, and uh, their god is the moon god, pagan gods. Oh, you can't say that. Or Islam, they want to cut your head off. Oh, I know there's some peaceful ones. But there's a few of them that will cut your head off, and they just and they just raised hell in the Middle East, killing a bunch of people, including Muslims that don't agree with them, other Muslims that don't agree with them. In England and France and Europe, you you mentioned something like that on Facebook or somewhere. Hello, it's the Islamophobia police. Hello, it's the homophobia police. You are out of order. You cannot speak against this. Did you use the wrong pronoun? Did you call this man wearing a dress? Did you call him, sir? We're going to fine you. We're going to put you in jail. Well, that's where we're at. And they want to bring this to the United States and they want to flood us with Muslims, flood us with people from the third world countries. We need to go to these other countries and, and help them there because bringing people here that rape and throw acid in women's faces. This is all over. You're not going to find this on ABC, NBC, and uh, CNN and all this. you got to get to alternative news sources on the Internet. Start looking around because they're reliable. There's some people, some real journalism that don't have an agenda in propaganda because the main news stations on the TV and so forth, there's only a handful of owners, and they're sold out for the mystery of iniquity, for Lucifer. All right, let's continue here. And so, um, so they're gonna they're gonna start banning the Bible. It's gonna happen, people. It's already begun. And what man means for evil, I, the Lord, will uh, use for good, to bring many souls. To salvations. Romans 8.28 says, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. No matter what happens, bad or good to you, there's a bigger picture here of God's plan, and if you love the Lord and you trust Him, you're going to make it through this, and you're going to glorify God even in the midst of your persecutions and sufferings. Praise his name. And so, um, 
Many souls will come through Christ. The church is going to come. is in for a test. There's no pre-trip rapture. You can take a look at my website, uh, Chaplain Peter 1, on YouTube. Um, I mean, it's clear. He comes at the end. We go through this stuff because God's going to test his people. You're going to have to love the Lord more than your life. It's as simple as that. That's real Christianity. And so... Um, the hour is coming when the darkness of evil will be so great that a kind word of salvation, preach, preaching the word of God, will provoke men to kill you. You can look at Matthew 24, Revelation 13. Why don't we go to, uh, take a look at Matthew 24 for a second. And see what he has to say because he, he talks about earthquakes and famine and all kinds of uh, things are going to happen during this time because the apostles they ask him when is the end of the world coming and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world in verse 3 verse 4 and Jesus answered and said unto him take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation. That word nation is ethnos. It means racial, racial wars. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. You look this up in the Greek, what it means, the beginning of sorrows, is like a woman about to give birth. See, the whole point is, there's always earthquakes. There's always um, homosexuality. There was always wars and kingdoms fighting one another. There was always famines and pestilences in various places throughout the earth. But now, it's, it's gonna, it, what is happening, it's like a woman giving birth. The uh, birth pangs, they're getting closer. <coughs> the contractions start getting closer and closer together until a child is born. And what's going to be born here is the Antichrist and the tribulation and the time of persecution. That's why it's translated these are the beginning of sorrows. And so he goes on to say in verse 9, and then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my namesake of all nations, United Nations, all the world. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The hearts are going to get hard, man, cold hearts. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Who's preaching the gospel? We're going to be preaching the gospel. If the time starts now, we're here. And then comes the end, when, when all the nations hear the word of God. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by the Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read it, let him understand. That's going to be, I believe, when the Antichrist enters into a temple, probably a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, and he declares himself to be God. Second Thessalonians talks about this also. And so, and all hell is going to break loose. All hell is going to break loose, and they're going to be killing us. Your own children that don't believe are going to betray you. Your neighbors are going to betray you because they'll probably get a reward or they'll get to live if they don't. This is going to be serious, serious business here. And so, in this darkness that's coming, the Lord says the night's coming and no man can work. No man can work. Let's look at uh, Ephesians in uh, chapter 5. Speaks about this. The Apostle Paul has something to, uh, to tell us about this. 
that uh, we are to do what we can while it is still daylight because the night is coming this darkness is coming and why don't we take a take a look at this and he says here uh, why don't we read Ephesians 5 verse 1 be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savour but fornication, sex outside of marriage, covers all kinds of sexual uh, perversions. But fornications and all uncleanness, spiritual uncleanness and covetousness, greediness, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, uh, telling um, coarse jokes. we got to be careful how we speak and how we act. Foolish talking, jokes that might not be exactly godly, uh, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, whoremonger is a male prostitute, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance, in the kingdom of Christ and the God. He's got no inheritance. And by the way, idolatry does not have to be you making, cutting down a tree and making an idol or pouring a molten image. You got them in your head. The way you think God is, if it's not the true de uh, depiction of God, it's a false idol. It's a false Jesus. It's another God. Oh, God just loves everybody. Everybody's going to heaven. All people are are good. Man, you got some other God. It's an idol, my friend. The wrath of God is very real. And because he's a just and holy God, there must be judgment. There must be judgment. In his mercy, he sent Jesus to die for our sins and be risen from the dead to forgive us of our sins and give us a place for all eternity with him. And he says in verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. Do you hear that, saints? Don't be partakers with them. For you were, ye were sometimes darkness. We all were born into sin and lived in darkness and did shameful things. <coughs> Excuse me. But now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them. In other words, expose them. For it is a shame, verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light. Talking about the light of the gospel, the light of God. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest. Wake up, you Christians that are sleeping. Don't you understand what's happening here? Where we're at? In what season in history we're in? Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. He'll give you understanding. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time, buying up the time, not wasting it, because the days are evil. Be careful, man, sitting around just watching TV all day, playing with your computer all day and your, and your uh, iPhones, and just wasting, wasting, wasting time when we need to be witnesses for the Lord, man. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, where is, is access. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another, in the fear of God. And then the Lord here concluded that we're going to work even in the darkness. 
When we're, when we're not allowed to preach the gospel, when they're going to put us in jail and kill us for it, the censorship has already started, and they're doing it already in other parts of the world, and it's coming here to America. In America, we're going to be crucified right here on the streets of America. We're going to be uh, martyred. We're going to be beheaded. They're going to kill us, man. This is the real Christian life. If they hated me, Jesus said, they're going to hate you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. The servant is not greater than his master. Amen? And so, in conclusion here, we'll work in the darkness, but there's going to be many, many martyrs. And if we go to uh, Revelation chapter 7... We will see that there is a time in heaven that um, there's going to be so many people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, from all over the earth, and they're going to be standing in front of God. We have the 12,000 of every tribe of Israel sealed, 144,000. And then he says in verse 9, Revelation 7, 9, he says, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and out to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be granted our God forever and ever. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed, which are dressed in these white robes? And where did they come from? And the Apostle John was having this vision. He says, you know. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation at 42 months and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, they gave their lives for Jesus. They stood on the truth all the way to the end. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall no more, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor heat, for the Lamb, the Lamb in the midst of the throne shall feed them. This is the new heavens and the new earth. And shall lead them into living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know, it's very possible that the 144,000 that are sealed, and then it says in, after this, I beheld a great multitude that the 144,000 are actually a figure, figurative number. And it includes, includes everybody in the New Jerusalem, because the New Jerusalem is, um, it's a cube. And it's 12,000 by 12,000 by 12,000. And 12,000 times 12,000 is 100. And 44,000 has 12 stories. So it may be that this is a figurative number of all the uh, believers. And what happens to them is, you know, they're before the throne of God. Many of them die. Either way, whether they're actual only Jews being um, sealed and the rest are, is the people from all nations, all tongues, and all tribes being put to death, there's going to be a great amount of martyrs. Praise his holy name. And why don't we just look at Revelation 13 here for a moment because, I mean, uh, this is this is so clear what, what, it, what is, you know, what is about to, uh, to happen to us. I, I'm telling you, man, Trump, God put Trump in there and he's holding this stuff back, man. He's holding it back. He doesn't got to be an angel. He doesn't got to be a believer in Christ. God uses who he wants. I pray he gets saved, but God uses who he wants. 
and uh, when he's gone, man, or gets killed or whatever, uh, then it's gonna then it's gonna start. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. He's staying. He's standing by the Aegean Sea. He's a prisoner at the uh, in Pathmos, the island called Pathmos, and the Aegean Sea is looking out uh, to the Mediterranean. He's on the beach, on the beach there, and he saw this vision rise up out of the Mediterranean. A beast having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy to speak to curse God. And the beast which I saw was not like unto a leopard. Um, the one depicted as a leopard in the book of Daniel was Alexander the Great. And his feet was the feet of a bear. This was Persia. And his mouth was the mouth of a lion. Persia is Iran, by the way. His mouth was the mouth of a lion. Uh, Babylon was, was the lion which was Iraq in that area. And the dragon gave him his power. The dragon is the devil, his seat and his great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. There's seven of them. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. There's a lot of speculation to what this means, but if it's a man that's going to be killed or fake the death and, and, and come back to life, the whole world's going to wonder after him. And they worshipped the dragon, the devil, which gave him, gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this is a powerful, powerful um, military power in the earth in these last days. Excuse me. Um, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months, 1260 days, three and a half years. A Hebrew year was 360 days. He opened his mouth in blasphemy, speaking against God, to blaspheme his name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Jehovah, and his tabernacle in heaven, and them that dwell in heaven. Can you imagine this? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Who gives this Antichrist the ability to overcome the saints? And power was given him under all kindreds, tongues, and nations. God does. Our God, who sent Jesus, gives him this power. The devil can't make a move unless God allows it. Read uh, Job, the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the face shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, that's Jesus, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. God's got to open your spiritual ears. He that lead it into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. We don't lead into captivity. We don't take prisoners. And we don't kill with the sword. Here is the patience of the saints. You take whatever happens to you. Now, I did make a video about pastors arm your churches. But I take that Excuse me, I take that as a, as a self-defense measure. Not to go out and to make insurrection against the government and to fight and make war. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast, second beast, comes out of the earth. Not out of the Mediterranean area, but out of the earth. And he's got two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The dragon's a liar. This is going to be a big liar. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. 
and he does great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth and the side of men. Who knows, maybe satellites shooting down laser beams. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And he and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image. There's that word image again. Icona, icon, an idol, a molten image we saw in the Hebrew, to the beast. And that, uh, okay, to the beast which he had to wound by a sword, and he came back to life. He copies Christ, a false resurrection, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. We just saw in Daniel 3 what Nebuchadnezzar did. That was a picture of the three boys being thrown in the, in the furnace and one looked like the Son of God because there was four. That's, that's us in the tribulation. And it's this exalting himself, his own image. And what is this that he brings it to life? Long time ago I thought, is this a TV set? But now, with these robots and this artificial intelligence actually speaking, and they want to link us up to it. Man, oh man. You see, the Bible, man, is way ahead of you scientists and all you people out there that actually believe you came from monkeys and there's no God. The Bible's way ahead of you because it's from God, the eternal God. Not the eternal gas or cosmos that exploded and all of a sudden you got a man walking the face of the earth. God help us, man. And so you got to worship this beast or you'll be killed. His image that comes to life. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, slave and free, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. Um, that no man would buy or sell unless he's, he's got the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score and six. The same dimensions of... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar's statue is 66 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. 603 score and 6. And I'll tell you something else. When you look up these words in the Greek, it's not written the number 666, but it's, it gives you three letters. And one of those letters is some old ancient Greek letter and it means to prick with a pinpoint, a sharp prick point. Is, it, is that a hypodermic needle inserting a chip? A robot, a computer inserting a chip in your brain? Is that what this is coming to? Yeah, I believe so. And so people, we got so much time left, church, and you that think you're, you're flying away, let me tell you something. You're not flying away. You have fallen away. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Read it. There must be a falling away first. And then the Antichrist, man of sins, got to sit in the temple, declaring himself to be God, so he's worshipped above all gods. That all has to happen first before the Lord can return. Wake up. There is no sudden eminent return of Christ. You've been bamboozled brainwashed and I'm not I'm not trying to mock you uh, this is so serious saints nobody's flying away you have fallen away this is the Laodicean church age this is the lukewarm church we got everything we need we we you know we we know everything we're smart people and and it says you're blind you're naked you're miserable I counsel you to buy gold tested in the fire He's going to melt you down, man, and mold you into the image of Christ through the persecutions, if you endure it. you got to endure it to the end to be saved. 
And that is not some strange uh, scripture under the law of Moses. That is normal Christianity from Genesis to Revelation. Wake up. Redeem the times. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, that the church wakes up. I pray that you do prepare a holy bride, a holy people for the coming of the groom, our King, our Lord, the Prince of the earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that the church may glorify you, Lord, even if they have to die for you. We just thank you, Father. Wake up the church. Wake me up, Lord. Help us to redeem the time for the days are evil. We pray for them that are in authority, for Trump and his cabinet and all the people, even even the ones that are uh, against him and uh, even the, even the uh, crazy Democrats with the climate change and all the other stuff, Lord. Father, this, this is not a Democratic or Republican thing. This is an evil, evil or good thing. That's what this is. Good or evil. And so, Father, we just Thank you. Help us to wake up, Lord. To wake up, Lord, because your word is clear. God bless you, saints. I love you, and the Lord loves you. Till next time. Amen. And now i got to figure out how to shut this thing off. Oh, yes, here we are. <laughs> All right.